With over 50,000 plugins on the WordPress repository, it's pretty much impossible to take a look at all those available. And I'm pretty sure there are some really cool ones out there that we're never ever going to find. And that's why I've got a collection of plugins you probably never heard of. Courtesy goes to Kyle Van Dusen over at the admin bar and the people that actually contributed to this. I'll give you a link to the full list, which I pretty much stole all of these from. So the link will be in the description. Check that out because there's a lot more great plugins on there you may want to take a look at for yourselves. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the first plugin. So first of the banks, we've got Tool Belt. Now Tool Belt is a nifty little plugin that allows you to do quite a few different things. You can see we've got some Tool Belt modules include things like contact form, post categories, simple slider, project grids, testimonial grid, and so on. There's a lot of great little free options inside you. You can see we've also got things like admin interface tweaks, avatars, breadcrumbs, contact forms. There's a ton of different options inside you. Let's take a quick look at some of the settings we have. See if there's something you want to take a look at for yourself. Now, as always, the link for this will be in the description to so check it out so you can take a look at all of the features that it has. Okay, let's take a quick look in a WordPress dashboard. So once you install Toolbelt, you'll see you have a new entry inside your dashboard under Toolbelt. And inside there, you can see when we open it up, there's an awful lot of options inside you. Now, some are experimental, so it will be worthwhile if you want to test these out, you back your site up first before you run any experimental features. But this is nice because it gives you some information about each one of the features and also the actual page impact should you decide to actually install and use those particular features. So you can see we've got some things like admin tweaks, which has no page impact, avatars, breadcrumbs, header cleanup, contact form, cookie banner, and so on. And as you can see, there's an awful lot of different options inside you, including things like infinite scroll, layout grid, lazy load images, and so on. There's tons and tons and tons of options inside you. The nice thing about this though, is that each one of these is totally disabled by default and you can enable them should you want to. Everything has documentation, so you can check out exactly where it does, how to use it, and get the most out of it. So, for example, you may want to enable the testimonial option as a custom post type. Click on documentation. We can then go ahead and take a look on GitHub at exactly what that does and any options, features, tweaks, and settings, and so on that may be applicable to that specific feature. So you can see we've got all the information about it there. If we come back out of that and take a look at something else, for example, we may want to take a look at the cookie banner. We can click open the documentation up on there. And again, it now gives us all the information about GDPR, all the options that are associated with it, including any of the filters that are available for that particular feature. So there's a ton of options inside Toolbelt, more than I can cover in this. So check that out. That's the first one I would recommend taking a look at. It's pretty cool. Next on the list, we've got Unbloater. Now, Unbloater is pretty cool, and it's geared towards the admin part of your website and basically clearing out a lot of unused features, code, and so on. Again, take a look at the description to find out exactly what this does. But you can see we've got a range of different options, 50-plus options for hiding update notifications for non-admin users, disabling core auto-updates, removing admin footer text, a ton of options. There's even some options for the front end as well. So you can use this alongside those options, including block editor, third-party plugins. There's a, an abundance of options inside you. I've already gone ahead and installed this. And to find the options, you go into settings and you come into unbloater. And inside there, you can see you can jump to various different sections, the back end, the front end, and the block editor. And if you have any of those other plugins like WooCommerce installed, you'll have additional features as well. So you can see we can do things like hide the update notification from non-administrators. Great if you're handing this off to a client and you don't want there to be nagged by updates. You can see some of the options are automatically enabled. But if we go through, you can see we can disable code editors, post revisions, application passwords. There's a ton of things inside your admin footer, removing the W from the admin item at the top. You can remove things like the RSD link, short links, feed generator, DNS feeds, emojis. Now, some of these are the kinds of things you'd expect to see in tools like Perf Matters and other security-based tools. But if you don't want to use those and you still want to get rid of some of these things, well, you can do it using a tool like Unbloat for absolutely zero cost. Again, recommend checking this out because there's a real abundance of options inside you to fine tune and tweak the admin, the front end, and various different plugins you may want to install. Again, link in the description, documentation. I would recommend checking out to see if it's something you want to try for yourself. 
Next on our list is if you're a Gutenberg user, you may miss the ability to conditionally hide and show various different blocks in your designs. Well, in a block visibility, the free version, you have a ton of great options you can use with zero outlay. There is a pro version, no affiliation, nothing at all. Links to both versions down below. So let's take a quick look at some of the things you can do using block visibility with your block based designs using Gutenberg. So once you've installed the block visibility plugin, when you go into the Gutenberg editor and select any of your blocks, you'll find under the block section on the right hand side, we have a new entry inside there that's called visibility. If we open that up, that now gives us a selection of different options available to us. Some of these may not be available in the free version. However, there's enough to find out if this is a plugin you want to check out. And for a lot of use cases, there's more than enough inside the free version to do quite a lot of different things. So let's take a quick look. You can see we've got options for things like scheduling. You can see we can set a schedule up on here. We can set things up to based upon a date, time, and so on. So we can choose when and where we want to show something. Great if you've got banners promoting something or you have a special time limited offer that you only want to show during that period, this could work perfectly. You can see we can hide when the schedule applies. We've got so on, different options inside there. We've also got options for user roles. So you may have a navigation setup. You only want to show features to logged in or logged out users where well, you could use that on here as well. You can see logged in, logged out, user roles. And if we select one of those, we can choose what role we want to apply it to. All the normal options you would expect to see inside you. So there's a lot of different things you can use. Unfortunately, things like rule sets, you can only use that in the pro version. However, there's still probably more than enough inside you for most use cases. And then finally, we've got the option for various different screen sizes. So you can show and hide based upon the device that's being used and to view the site itself. You may want to hide things on mobile, desktops, tablet, where well, you can do that with this free plugin. So check that out if you want to take a look at hiding various different parts of your block-based designs. Now, sticking with display conditions and the block editor, we've now got Wicked Block Conditions, another variation on the same type of theme. As you can see, this has some of the same options, but it also has some additional, more pro kind of level features that really could open up some options for you. Again, check out the documentation. So I've already gone ahead and installed this. We've gone back into the same page again, and we're going to choose the image at the top. Again, you see we've got a new entry in the right-hand panel, this time called Display Conditions. And if we open that up, this now gives us a selection of different kinds of conditions we can use. User conditions, post conditions, date conditions, and advanced options. So for example, you may want to show this only when the user's logged in. Well, you can choose that option and then you can say to show or hide based upon their status. You've then got the little cog icon so you can adjust various different things inside there, negate the condition, and so on. If we come back out of that, we could take a look at some of the other conditions that are available. And as you can see, we've got post has a term. So if you want a specific term, you can choose post status. You can check a date condition. And you've got some more advanced features inside here as well. So the advanced function gives us, as its name suggests, some advanced functions. We've got things like check a user defined function. But what I kind of find more interesting is the check a query string value. If we open that up, you can see we can choose the parameter and the value. Now you could use this in a lot of use cases, but one that I could think of straight off the top of my head is if you were using email marketing and you wanted to send someone over and you wanted to show or hide something based upon them clicking that specific link, you could set a variable into that actual link itself, pass that over when they click, and then take a look and check that parameter and the value and then show or hide a specific part of your design inside your block based designs. A pretty advanced feature, but also in the totally free version. Check it out if you want some more conditions for your block based designs. So now we've seen how to deal with conditional logic in various different ways to show and hide your block based designs. The next thing I want to take a look at is using invite codes. Now this is great if you want to restrict access to your actual website, only have invite codes and you can then associate those with a specific user. So if you wanted to, you can track exactly who clicks on those links, who joins up and subscribes or registers to your website. But there's also lots of things you can do inside there. I would recommend taking a look at the little video. It's only a couple of minutes long and it's going to go into more detail than I can do. But let me just quickly show you how easy it is to generate a code and then only allow users with that code to register on your site. So once you've installed the Invite Codes plugin, you'll see you have a new entry called Invite Codes. Inside there, we've got a range of different options and settings we can configure. There's some add-ons, but they are paid add-ons. So if you want to use this with the likes of WooCommerce or you want to use it with Buddy Forms and so on, well, you may need to take a look at those options. But for everything else, 
you can use the free version of this. So if we come over to the invite codes, this will give us a list of all of the codes that have been generated. If you come into add new, you can generate new codes. You can also specify to link these to an email, whether they have multiple uses, the number of uses, and the purpose. So it could be for anything, or it could be specifically limited to registrations. So once you've created that, you can then give that to the end user. They can share it with whoever they want, but to get access, they have to put in that unique code. So let me just quickly demonstrate what I'm talking about. So I've opened up a private window in Safari. Let's just drop in the link so we can go ahead and take a look at the admin side of things. Now we've got the option to register. I've set this up so anybody can register. We we'll click on the register and you'll see we have a new entry called invitation code. So if someone tries to register and doesn't put in an active code, they'll get an error message. But anybody that has that active code will be allowed to register on the site. It's as simple as that. And then you can go back into the dashboard of your account and you can see exactly who's used what particular code. And you can track all of that, including removing the user and any of their registration codes that have been applied. So if you find you've got a rogue user and they've invited half a dozen other people, you can delete the user and all of the registrations that come from their unique code or codes. So pretty cool if you want to keep track of that. So you find if we take a look inside the tree view, you can see this gives us now some basic information, some general statistics about the codes published, those kinds of things. Invite codes tree. So if we've got multiple codes, we can see all the information inside there. The user tree which allows us to see what user has registered. And again, we can find out who they've shared codes with, so they've registered and so on. So we can see a, a full tree of that. And also the user tracker, which allows us to exactly who's been invited and so on. So there's a lot of options inside you. It's not the prettiest looking plugin in the world, but if you want a free and easy way of limiting access to your site using invite codes and tracking who shares them, deleting them if you find rogue users, you may want to check out this little free plugin. Could be quite useful for you. Next on the list, if you use videos and embed them into your website, it can be a little bit of a slow and boring process. That's where WordPress featured video comes into play. It simply allows you to go ahead, insert a link URL to a video on YouTube, for example, and then pull in all the information for you. Let's take a quick look at what I'm talking about. So you see, once you go ahead and add in a post, you have a new section at the top called video URL. All you need to do is go ahead and grab any link to a video itself from YouTube, for example. You can grab the URL from the top. You can see all we need to do is go to the top of the screen, grab the little URL code. Once you've grabbed that, you can just simply copy it, hop back over to your page, simply drop that into the actual video URL link, set any parameters you want. So you can set things like set the video title and so on. Once you've done all of that, you can find all you need to do is go ahead and click on that query video option. And once you click that, that now pulls in the title, the description, and any other information you have associated with it, including the thumbnail, embeds the video, and then gives you some additional options to customize exactly how you want everything to look. It's pretty cool, relatively easy to use, and if you use a lot of videos on your site, you may want to check this out for a quick and easy way of adding them to your overall site without having to go and copy all this information over from the likes of YouTube. Now, if you have a lot of content sent to you in the likes of Word documents and so on, you'll know it can be a bit of a pain when you want to copy and paste that into your page or post. You've got to enable the paste as plain text, and if you forget to do that, you've got to go back and do it and wipe all the content. It's just a pain in the butt. However, you may want to take a look at paste as plain text by default. Now, this is a pretty cool little plugin. First caveat, it doesn't currently work with Gutenberg. However, it does work if you've got the classic editor, you're using Divi, you're using Elementor and various other builders. So you may want to check this out. There's a video on the website. I'll put a link to the description below. Check that out. It's a pretty simple kind of way of working. But if you do this a lot, it can just save you the hassle of forgetting to enable that option by default because it will be by default. So take a look at that link in the description. Check out the little video to show you how to use it. Next up, we all know that comment spam when it comes to WordPress comment section can be a bit of a pain in the bum. We know that it can be targeted and there's lots and lots of junk gets through. So I tend to disable this feature and I'm sure a lot of other people do. Yes, we have paid for features like a Kismet and so on that you can use, but not everybody has the budget for that. So you may want to take a quick look at forget spam content another free plugin over on the wordpress.org repository. I would highly recommend though that you check out the video before you install this. And if you do decide to install it, back up beforehand just in case, because while it works with all the normal 2020, 2021 themes and so on, 
Not all themes may be supported because some will change the actual code that's being used and the link to the page and the IDs and so on that this uses to check. So what this does is it takes the link to the comment page and then it adds a string of characters at the end which is unique to the website that the actual comment form is on. And then if you find anything has changed, anything's been tampered with, it will stop that from being usable. So if someone tries to target the actual plain default link itself to that comment post type, you can't access it. So it just means that you reduce the ability for bots and so on to attack that particular uh, PHP file and should help out reducing that amount of spam. But check it out, and like I say, make sure you back it beforehand and make sure it's gonna work with your theme and any plugins you may have installed. But check it out, it could be really useful to cut down that comment spam and junk on your site. We now have Doubly. Now, this is a cross-domain copy and paste for WordPress. Now, I'm sure you probably use plugins like Elementor and so on. You may be able to copy between various different pages, but not everything allows you to do that between different sites. Plus, if you've got things like advanced custom fields, WooCommerce, even WordPress users, they can be copied and pasted. However, there is one important caveat here. Not all of these features are available in the free version. Again, I've got no affiliation with these. Links in the description for the free version and the pro version. You may find the free version covers everything you needed to, but check it out anyway, because it'll show you all the different features available. But like I say, what this does is it allows you to simply copy and paste between different websites on different domains. Great if you're creating content and you have something like in advanced custom fields or a complete post or something like that, you want to transfer from one domain to another this could be a great starting point. So you can see this actually supports for free WordPress pages, elemental sections, unlimited elements. However, if you want posts and you want WooCommerce products or media files, they are pro-based features. If we come down, we'll see that we have additional options as well. So I would recommend checking all of this out because there's a ton of different options inside you, including, like I say, the ability to take ACF or advanced custom fields and copy and paste various different information over there as well, and WordPress users and so on. So if you want to have a quick and easy way of doing that, you may want to check out Doubly and take a look at what this offers you, take it for a spin and see if it does what you needed to do. Finally, we're going to take a look at accessibility new window warnings. It doesn't sound particularly exciting, but accessibility is an important factor when it comes to WordPress websites or any kind of website in general. And this does one simple thing. If it finds a link that opens up another tab or another window, it will insert the accessibility information into that to make sure that you are fully compliant on that particular feature. Again, it's a really simple thing to do. All you need to do is install it, configure anything needs to be configured, and then all it does is it looks for any windows that have the target underscore blank and it will then add the relevant information to make sure it's accessible to any screen reader or any kind of aids that you have to improve accessibility to those users that may need it. So now you've seen my selection you may want to check out Kyle's list of different plugins and the expansive range on top of what I've already shown you in this particular video. I will put a link in the description below so check those out there's some really really cool different plugins there again you probably don't even know anything about However, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.